Welcome to the Lost Signals Discusses Film and TV. Using the revolutionary Manzo Ramosi Thurlow scale, or MOMS, we scrupulously review these art forms with an emphasis on narrative structure. Join us for another entertaining episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Lost Signals Discusses Film and Television. Today we are doing Suspiria. I'm Jonathan Ian Manser, here with Christopher Morgan. Good evening. And Scott Thurlow. Well, my witch is at. And uh, this is a film oh, starring... Uh, well, so Tilda, to be clear, sorry, 2018 Suspiria. Yes, 2018. Starring Tilda Swinton and Tilda Swinton and... Featuring. Featuring <laughs> Tilda Swinton. <laughs> yes. Uh, Scott, would you like to start with the funny log line yes. and the plot? Yes, so we've gone with uh, the blackest of all swans, if you will. And so given that, the plot is in 1977 Berlin, there is a dance troupe, an all-female dance troupe that is, which is secretly or like maybe not so secretly a coven of witches in which is run by like an older, there's like, again, a coven of older women who sort of recruit and <laughs> sort of entice young girls to join the dance crew in which they then enact rituals to enhance and prolong their own life. And it centers on a um a young dancer named Susie who comes to join the dance uh to, to join their dance crew. And at first it seems as if she doesn't know what's going on, like a uh, conspiracy sort of like surrounding it. There's also uh one of the characters, as you mentioned, played by Tilda Swindon is a a psychiatrist doctor who slowly pieces together the fact that indeed this coven of witches exists, it is real, and their magic is also real, and sort of um, collides with each other. But, spoiler, one of the big twists is that Susie like knows about this and is there's sort of a schism within the coven itself. So one side is like supporting one mother, if you will, like that's what they vote, the, they, they call their leaders. So, after a number of gruesome ish things happening to girls who don't wish or seem to be uh, against the uh, being in the coven. It's revealed that Susie has knowingly slash voluntarily become the vessel for the true, one of the true mothers against the false mother of the coven. And it all comes to a head. Or like, uh, that, it's two mothers that, competing and she, Susie is see, like the progenitor of all. See, I thought, I thought like the, the one mother was a false one. She was, I believe there was a line. I'm sorry. When we get into it, that, uh, Mother Marcos is not one of the true, the three mothers, the original three mothers. She's like a pretender almost to the throne. At least that's what I well, got out of it. But I think that Blanc and Marcos were competing mothers, and and mothers Marcos superior, was so. in a sense, kind of, I guess, betraying what yeah. the initial I thought she was like of being coven. She like, was like an usurper essentially, yeah. roughly. And so yeah, they get rid of her and restore Blanc to her rightful place. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Like it's it's a slow burn of a movie for sure, and I believe it's on me to go to plot anyway. Like like I just said, so I'm gonna look at like I, I know we've taken to the habit of sort of qualifying our scores as like an okay or like a decent or like a strong whatever, mm. but I'm going to give it a strong two, verging on a three for plot. Like I said, yes, it's a slow burn, but as we briefly discussed precast, that's not necessarily a bad thing to be fair. And I think this might bleed over to style, but the tension of this movie is kept up and ramped up throughout and, and exactly where it needs to be. So I'm going to give it a lot of credit on that front mm. for that. Yeah, like some of the reveals maybe, I don't even say like could be placed differently. Maybe some of them could have been sped up but I don't know if that would have made it a better movie per se either. So I'm I'm in a difficult position here but all I'm saying is uh, my gut feeling is to give it a pretty damn strong three in terms of plot and the way... A strong three? I'm sorry, a strong two, verging on a three, in terms of the way it unfolded and the information it revealed to you and who knows what and what's happening. So I'm not going to compare this at all to the original because I think that it's a very different. Yeah, it's a it surface level, on its, it's own. the same, mm. but intent, the intent of it is very mm. different. I like the fact that they reveal that this is a coven like fairly pretty soon. early. Yeah. Uh, and it's a lot of the subplots in this is a service to the themes they're trying yes, to mention. Yes, absolutely. The psychiatrist, uh, which we're, I will get to in depth in themes, mm. but like his entire subplot is 
it's an ancillary to what the main thing is, but it's really in service to what they're trying to get, uh, give us a message. Yeah, here. exactly. You're right. It's a slow burn, but this is what I like in my uh, horror films. And I think it did a, like, I brought up uh, off cast prior to this uh, Hereditary. Mm. And it's a similar fashion that they they build up the tension. So here I mentioned that they uh, they established the coven, that it's a coven very soon. So now you're wondering. The dynamics instead of, of that, like yeah. what the mystery is of like what's going on you're looking you know what the repercussions for all the actions are and you're watching mm. these characters and now you're saying when are they going to get caught what are the repercussions for their actions going to be yeah exactly. and i thought that was very well done uh yeah i don't disagree and i i don't know if it's a 10 movie so this might be where i'm going to deduct a point off of yeah. for that but it's a very strong yeah Two, if not three. Cynically, that's exactly how I'm thinking. So, what do you think, Chris? Well, I have the uh, benefit of having uh, Rich and I watched it uh, two days ago, and I watched it again tonight. And um, I did like the fact that they right away told you that there was a coven because I, that actually took me by surprise. The fact that okay, they're not going to do this. Where are they going to go? The biggest enigma through the whole thing was where did the psychiatrist fit in? Mm. And ultimately, they needed a witness for it, and he was the witness. He was like an integral part of their their, their last ritual, if you will, like their Suspir- ultimate ritual. But, but in the epilogue, Suspiria mm. telling him about his wife, this mystery that he was looking for his whole life, she gives him that, and then she's able to take, she's able to give him the truth the and closure, then yeah. take everything away from him, so he is not in pain anymore. There's a catharsis for it, so. Two days ago, I'd probably agree with the strong two. Watching it again and feeling as strongly as I am, and I'm going to bring in something into it. Um, I'm giving it a very, very strong three. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, this this film actually, I like. I, I think this is one of these films that actually grows every time you see it. And one of the things, I, and I like our Kent, our Gento a lot. Um, I'm a fan of his, and one of the things when I saw the movie Opera, it was pretty obvious who the murderer was, like in the <laughs> first act. Mm. But the thing that struck me with Arkento is he's got great style to him, and the whole thing about Opera was it was this um, soprano, and I was watching them. Uh, I can't remember the opera. He just he set this opera in World War II, and I'm sitting here going, I want to see that opera actually more than the movie. And I want to go back and watch the original Suspiria because watching it now reminded me so much of Stravinsky's Rite of Spring. Uh, number mm. one, it was not well received <laughs> the first time. People actually booed it because it was very dissonant. Sure. And I'm reading the synopsis right now because one of the things is uh, is the sacrifice. And at the end, um, the woman, uh, the chosen one, dances herself to death. That's the whole thing. She dances herself. And she is chosen in between uh, uh, a divide between two groups in opposition to one another. And I really would like to go. And I, I, I have recall. I, t- I looked at the notes here because I'm trying to recall from when I was in college uh, doing music school. I mean, because it was very much an avant-garde piece, and mm. the dance in here was very avant-garde. Um, and I really want to go back to the original Suspiria and see if there how much of it was like carried over. Yeah. Or if the director whose name I'm blocking right off the top of my head really decided I'm going to really use a red spring as the model. Um, I found this an extremely fascinating film to watch. And again, I I agree with you. I'm glad right away the other night that they just took the mystery away and said, yes, we're dealing with the coven of witches, which was the, which was a secret the first time. But I found this movie the, two nights ago, I found it engrossing from the first um, okay. moment on. Okay, go. Yeah. And I was very, I found myself wanting to know where the psychiatrist fit in. That was the biggest enigma. Tonight, I was actually able to watch it unfold in a way that made me want to. Two nights ago, Rich and I found this very haunting movie. And before we went to bed, Rich is just like, I wonder what kind of fucked up dreams we're going to have tonight. Good night. <laughs> okay. And I had fucked up dreams. And I text him the next morning. I'm like, hey, dude. And he's just like, yeah. And I'm like, I really want to see this again. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I do too. Mm-hmm. 
And luckily, we chose it for yeah, this. Yeah, but, but <laughs> sure. the thing is, that was the joke Rich and I had going into, and I'm like, oh, good, we're bringing other people into the fold. Mm. Um, I do think it is. Of the coven. It, yeah, <laughs> we, everybody joins the coven. Um, so I don't know if it's as fair an assessment to say upon a second watching, I actually, it actually did all of a sudden break into my top films of 2018. All right. Um, I actually truly love this movie, and there is a part where it gets gratuitous at the end in terms of violence, but once you realize... Mm. You know what? I might disagree with that well, when we get this down. No, but what I'm saying is when you, when you... And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, if you're sure. looking at this in terms of a piece of art, you get to that end, and a lot of people might be... That might turn them off to it. I think the initial dance scene would turn people off more than the ending. Well, well yeah. The, when, mm. when, when Olga's taken down, yes, that was probably the most disturbing thing I've ever... It's one of the most disturbing parts of the movie, I yeah, guess. Yeah, no, it is the most disturbing part of mm. the movie to me. But I found this movie to be extremely affecting. Um, I just, uh, as, as well as effective. And um, there's just... I, I think that I think it's a magnificent work, and it's getting a very strong three from me. All right, where do you, where do you uh, uh, now, come down? Either? So, again, I had mentioned that I don't think it's a ten, so, but I think there's another part I'm going to take a point off for because I really think that narratively. So, if we because I really need to parse this out for myself here. I feel you. You have the three plot, plot, plot lines in this. You have the coven uh, and its inner. Machinations, we'll say, yeah. And it's a really actually an interesting plot line to me because you have the one character, uh, one which who commits suicide, which is really left unexplained. Kind of unaddressed, but, yeah. True. But that act shows kind of the world they exist in where there's such pressure on them and that the inner conflict between uh, Blanc mm. and Marcos and and how that's dr driving that like I the the witch angle worked really well for me the psychiatrist angle again it narratively less important thematically very important and mm, uh, like S Susie becoming or always Suspiria her plot line is in finding out that twist and looking at it in retrospect is extremely interesting and the fact that and both narratively and thematically is very arresting in a way. And mm. looking back on how she couldn't save people who I think she would have saved otherwise. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to have to, I don't see a flaw in this film to, I don't think it's perfect, but I would give it like a soft three in a weird yeah, way. I get you. Like it's tough because I'm, you guys make very good points and I don't really have a necessarily an argument against giving it a three, but I like, <laughs> again, cynically, I don't think it's necessarily a perfect 10. So I might take like just a nitpick off like mm -hmm. per se, like here. Well, what's your nitpick then? Like, again, like it could have been maybe just parsed down. Like it's a two and a half hour long film, right? So, if it was 2.15... Did it feel that, though? It didn't feel that way to me. <laughs> me either. It, it didn't feel long, no, but it also didn't not feel long, if that makes sense, of, as you're a fan of a not-not thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, So, like, yeah, it, it's going to be a nitpick for sure. And like mm -hmm. I said, I could almost be pushed over the edge to give it a three, but I think I'm going to stick with like my initial reaction to give it a very, very strong two, just not quite enough. And any points I'm taking away here, I'll probably ship back to things like themes and, and style, mm -hmm. right? So... It, you guys almost convinced me. And yeah, I'm, I'm not like saying there's some huge big flaw like, oh, they should have done this completely differently. Like maybe there's some tweaks here and there. Mm. It would have been just, just a little bit tighter, just on the cusp. But I'm going to stick with the two, but a very strong two, to be For fair. For the amount of weird, I, I don't want to say padding to this, but the amount of the slow burn, I was actually impressed by the director's choice in cutting off scenes when he did mm. to add yeah. the element of the slow tension yeah. building. Yeah, I agree. Like, but it, was not handled ever, well. it never felt over long at any point. It would have been a really easy film because it's so stylistic to just be very opaque the whole thing and not really explain everything and to be frustratingly mm. leave it to your own interpretation, not like have one aspect, but to the whole narrative. Sure. And the thing is, and you bring up a good point with the one woman who killed herself, 
you watch her throughout everything. She's tortured. She's not doesn't want to see this again. I mean, it's you can tell that she's bothered by the whole world. She's mm-hmm. bothered by the conflict, but yeah. what they're doing to these girls. And she got to a point where she can't take it. But that's just one texture yeah. in this whole. In fact, you see that with all the women who get spared at the end. <clears throat> yes. Uh, because they were the uh, uh, the Blanc supporters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were always kind of hesitant to uh, what was the actions. And those that were fully for it were yeah, the they were uh, Marcos. Yeah, sure. so, and I love the end where she's like, she's penitent where she's just like i'm sorry you know she came she realized who she was truly realized who she was at the end like you said before it was too late to save everybody and she's like what do you want and her the people that she could have saved all said death and she went and basically it was kind of one of these things where she goes yeah yeah, but she went to joseph and kind of she was he was her father confessor in a lot of ways Mm. He she gave him some closure and then took the pain away, mm-hmm. like and it, so I found the ending to be very cathartic, um, and I love the oh, very bittersweet. Yeah, and the sure. the, the last thing Absolutely. you see before, like if you're not going to include the tag, is the initials on the house from the um, him and his wife. Yes. Yeah, so it was just like it really bookended it well. It really gave all. It really. Through it, it really tied in a lot of things, and the color scheme changed completely. For yes. Yeah, I noticed so. that. Well, I was waiting for that stop, yeah. but you're absolutely right. It does add a layer there for sure. But I think, like I said, like I could almost be convinced, but I'm just going to nitpick it here, and because of my cynical yeah. angle, like my backdoor angle of not giving it a ten, yeah. but I'll probably almost give certainly every other question a one. So spoiler, but mm-hmm. which we'll talk out. But I think we're doing three, three, and a two. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. So on to themes with me. So. The concept of mother is very mm. prominent in this, and also the concept of the failure of the father figure. Uh, so there's, I'm going to talk about the father figure quickly because mm. there's three male characters in this work. Uh, you have two policemen and Joseph, the psychiatrist, who in any other work, uh, the two policemen are almost immediately neutralized by yep. the coven. Uh, and not in the sense of killing them, but in the sense of just tur- using the magic. They're basically, term. mine wife would yeah. sell again. Uh, Joseph is in any other work going to be the Loomis. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for you to say that, but you're right. Like the, the man who will come in at the end to save them, and yeah. he couldn't. Yep, and it's and he's left naked on the floor. Uh, in a fetal position. Yeah, like helpless pretty much, and for sure. So then you have the concept of the, like, so the the paternal savior angle is completely demolished in this and very uh, for effect. But really what it is is the, the concept of the empowered female here, both, and, and also the, uh, with the, the young women who are in the ballet troupe, they're depowered by the maternal figures in a lot of way. So you have sort of that uh, inner conflict. Susie, who has her, I guess Amish mother, who is or very, like Christian-ish religion. Like no, they were general. Amish. She was the, explaining was? why okay. the Amish broke away from the Mennonites. Yes. Okay, so yeah, right, that's right. I forgot about that. Um, although they had a iron, uh, I think electric iron in there, so maybe they are Mennonites. Mm-hmm. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Uh, she has an abusive mother who stop, like punishes her for uh, her sexuality, uh, very controlling. Almost like Carrie-ish. I got like that similar-ish vibe. And if she was the – at some point became Suspiria, who is one of the three major uh, witches in there, who is like – so you have the idea of the abuse of the maternal to uh, hurt – younger women than you to preserve your own um, longevity, greatness yeah. and longevity. And you have Suspiria, who I think is the really the nurturing mother, even mm. if it is to... At the expense uh, of others. No, but not at the expense, because mm. Suspiria really never harms yeah, someone. Yeah, that's it's true. More, yeah. Like, yeah, she kills some of them, but in, in doing so, releases them from their torment. Uh, in fact, the Olga character... When her death scene, I'm like, just kill her already, please. Like, I don't, don't want to see her tortured anymore. Mm. Uh, and Sabiria does that. She, you've been tortured. I'm going to give you the release you desire. Uh, and she spares Joseph and gives mm. him both 
the knowledge of his wife and get, basically forgives him the closure the that knowledge, he was looking for. Yeah. But for, gets rid of the knowledge of what he has and seen then and gives him. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that entire like the nurturing mother versus the controlling mother. It's a very interesting look at things, and also the fact that. Um, uh, Susie's character before you know she's Suspiria is they need they want the idolized female form and uh, this is not my point of view this is actually an article I read about this before uh, sure. this, uh, the fact that there's this idolized f- view of f- femininity which is actually unachievable for a single woman to so they actually have to take like um, almost literal aspects pieces, of other, yeah. li- like literally, they're taking mm-hmm. aspects of other women to make the form the perfect uh, female, and this is women doing it to other women as well. Mm-hmm. So, I think this is actually a very interesting look and very, like, I love a good feminist work which looks at both the greatness of the the achievements of what women can be and also the, the other side of, of them as yeah. well. I mean, I think you're absolutely right. I don't have much more to add because then you cover a lot of it. And it's, yeah, certainly there's a strong feminist vibe. Like it's all, almost cert- uh, exclusively all female cast. And even one the most important male character is played by a woman. Yes. Which is yes. very interesting, right? So like you got that there. And yeah, I think it's very strongly addressed, everything you said, that it looks at both of those angles, like both the positive elements of it and the negative elements as framed by like a, a witch coven, you know, yeah. if you will. So yeah, I think it addresses it all quite nicely. And like we said, it's because it said it in 1977 in Berlin. You have sort of the some of the cultural like aspects that were happening, historical aspects that were also happening at the time that are sort of like somewhat interwoven throughout through the plot a little bit at least. Well, actually, I think that's very interesting because I, Chris, you brought this up, so I'm gonna uh, quote you here <laughs> with like we were discussing uh, during a break watching the film what the point of showing the hijacking the terrorist the hijacking. and yeah. I thought that perhaps it was because they brought it up so many times I'm like was it a reference to the fact that these women are really being like captured against Held their hostage, will essentially yeah, yeah. Uh, but you brought up the point that it could have been just a clever way of showing what the passage of time was for the audience and yeah. I thought that was a very interesting look at it and it also served one more master is the fact that when Patricia uh, disappears, they're saying that like she went and joined the Bader Meinhof. Mm-hmm. Right, that, the, that was their like but cover the, up. But yeah. at the end, when they show the picture of the four, they they show the woman, and it's not her. Mm. So I mean, yeah, I do, I do think it was a very clever way to mm. to do time, but it was also a way to because they don't reveal Patricia what happened to her until the end. Yes. But you you know the whole thing is like okay, she went to join. And then at the end, before they reveal that, you know, she's down in the basement, mm-hmm. they, you know, there is a reveal that she's not part of them. That's mm-hmm. good. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, it did serve well, many masters. Yes. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. I think it does. It's, 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 how shall I say this? There's a lot of subtlety to it, but also not subtlety, but that also worked. There's a lot of witches in the coven. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I also one. like what you said about the, um, about uh, the uh, aspects of femininity and what, Women who might be on the same side do to each other mm-hmm. in, 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 in terms of empowerment. It comes back to the human nature of like sometimes to elevate oneself, one sure. steps on the back of another. Man's, man's inhumanity to man or women's inhumanity to women, yeah. if you and, will. And, like. and to be, and be honest with you, that when you start talking about that aspect of it, I immediately thought of uh, Trey Amos' song Cornflake, mm-hmm. Cornflake Girl, which is about that, mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. the betrayal that women sure. have towards one another. And especially humans of either gender will backstab each other given the opportunity. Yeah, but you but you think about the fact that you know in you know probably now in 2019 you're hearing like, uh, oh, you have the first uh, female rap artist that women really took control of the Grammys, and uh, we mentioned it, and Honest Trailers mentioned it, Morgan (laughs) mentioned (laughs) it that (laughs) you know a lot of female directors have not been recognized, you know, and Mm -hmm. we're getting. And the thing is, so right now, what you say is to the forefront, you know, it, it, in other words, there are certain, you know, uh, you've got this male dominated society and then you, you've you got like the whole thing of like people stepping over each other's backs. And then this one, women using women to gain power mm-hmm. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a period of time in the 70s where 
you know, the, 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 um, women's movement. I mean, women, I mean, there was, we're still not at an equality, but that was when, you know, they're really making sure. a push. And uh, as I said, all the men in this are impotent. Yeah. And, or ineffectual. And, 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 and in fact, very least. you really see the, I believe the soft uh, penises of two <laughs> men in this, uh, yeah. with women having complete control over them. Yeah, and that certainly yeah. drives into the themes. Although the, one of the uh, uh, men was Tilda Swinton. Well, there's sure. three men. Oh, wait, no, you saw two penises, right? Yes. You didn't yes. see the third one. Um, Either way, yeah, with that, it, I'm it, giving it, themes a one. <laughs> any, any and all women in our audience, I mean, I'm just giving you my observation on it based upon you know what i know and sure um, but he's I, mansplaining what, to you i am yeah. mansplaining no but what he knows is, about penises go no, on yeah i do anyway i know whatever uh no but the thing is there i um there might be more to this to add is my whole point sure yeah so, again yeah we're qualified to the extent we are qualified but yeah, that, that's what I, we thought of it i don't mean it. to keep it over like mm. saying explain it, but but by the same token, it's... I think we're all giving themes a strong yeah, one anyways oh, for what it... So, Chris, how, how it continue it. talking about the antagonist. Well, the antagonist is pretty freaking interesting because are we going to talk about, like... Are, you tell me what you think it is. Well, on the uh, on the um, surface level, I'm thinking uh, Marcos. Marcos. Yes. I mean, that's what it wants yeah, you to but, think. But the, it the, sort the, of is the that same token, as well, but... It's not her so much as her symbolic she represents yeah, yeah exactly she she represents this artifice ideal that like everybody is a service of and is very ingenuine whereas um blanca blanca oh my god i'm yep, like it's it's blanca. blanca um she's more genuine she she is knowing that there is this sacrifice this this uh Whereas a woman has to give up herself to to embody somebody else. Consent. Consent. She, yes. Is the antagonist? Yes. You're Wait, saying? that's whole, that's right. Consent is always. Hold on a second. No, oh Blanca God. is looking for consent. Take it easy. And 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 Marco is not. She just wants. She just wants sure, right. to take over. So I mean, I get I, what you're saying. That, that so, is what is in the film. Yes. Yeah. So basically, I, I, it's kind of hard. It's one of these films where you're going. It's going to be a. The the manifestation of it is this one witch, who is actually the deceiver, mm -hmm. um, but it, but the antagonist would tie into the greater theme of, um, non consent using somebody else to uh to elevate oneself. Well, I think of it this way, right? Let's remove for a second the um supernatural elements, right? So it's just. Basically, a power struggle, a power grab, yep. a schism in a secret society, more or less, right? Mm -hmm. That in which their one side says we should do it this way, the other side says no, maybe we should like have a softer approach, if you will. So again, it's like basically humans' power struggle against each other. That will all like, the, um, and then to me, like that's always going to be effective because that's to me the history of humanity, more or less. And yeah, as filtered through the framework as we laid out. So I think to me, like that's always going to be pretty effective as an antagonist because it's a timeless one yeah. to me. I think it, I, I think I agree with Chris Moore with this because you're right. Uh, that is a element of it, but it really is the struggle between one side says that it should be done slower. This should be sure. done with your, more, more you can be a vessel if you want to become a vessel. Right. If you're willing to, um, it's, it's a way like, you have to sell your soul to the devil. You have to willfully right. decide to do that uh, versus being hand being put to the thing to sign it. I, yeah, I mean, I agree. Like, I'm going to give it a one, but like, for both of those, like, I think yeah. both of those angles you can get out of it. But uh, sorry, I just thought of a quick log line that you mentioned that we should have called this uh, Sabrina the Teenage Ballerina. <laughs> Dip. Oh, yes. That's so good. Oh, wait, hold on. But um, anyway, sorry, go ahead, Chris. But the. Um... I'm giving the one oh to Antag. I, I had a thought with uh, Blanc. Okay, it comes to the intent. Um, mm. When 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 uh, something can be corrupted, mm -hmm. because all right, you could do something good, but if you're doing something good to achieve an end rather than it be uh, like the means justifying or the yeah, end justifying. And she said something else like, if you don't enter this wholeheartedly, you're corrupting the process. It's not going to work anyways. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to figure out the moral philosopher that came up with. It's probably moral philosophy that, like, if you're doing something, if you're doing something out of the goodness of your heart, 
It is pure. It's like Pascal's wager, like essentially, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of. That the work comes becomes corrupted. Sure. If you if you're doing it disingenuously, mm -hmm. and and that's just another layer. Yeah. To no, it. yeah, I like that. I think, uh, like I said, all that's evidence. I think to give it a strong one for Antag, and I think we are doing that. All right, Scott, protagonist. All right, so we're gonna go with Susie, I believe. Yes, I would think so. Actually, though, like you might make a case that Sarah as well. Like basically, the inner cadre, like the dance group, is comprised of what maybe fifteen, twenty women, but it only focuses about like maybe three, four of them. One being Susie, i.e., Suspiria's vessel, and Sarah, her like sort of. Who, that becomes her best friend once he joins the crew and then of course uh Pat patricia sort of she's i don't want to say she's like, she's like the MacGuffin per se but she's definitely like the catalyst like it starts on her yeah it gives you like she basically without being exposition it, she's the exposition to tell you like hey this is what's happening like we said it's it, the movie makes it very clear which is coven happening shady stuff etc so like i think i'm going to call it mostly Susie for sure like like I said, it focuses on her. It's it's like about 80%-ish, if I'm going to slap a number, uh, from her point of view, right? You follow her story. But then you might say that, uh, you know, Tilda Swinton playing Dr. Yosef might sort of fit in there, right? So, like, that's sort of a, a secondary uh, protagonist to a degree, right? So, go ahead. Yeah, uh, it, I actually think that uh, Yosef is... The, the main the main mm. because he's the witness to all, to all of this. Mm. See, yes. that's a good call. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Shit, that's a really good point. Like, thing is, like, Susie's yeah. a great thing until you find out who she actually is. Mm. You didn't know who she is the entire time. That is uh, true. Yeah, that's a really good point. Go on. And yeah. even she only kind of was gathering evidence through it. No, I, I think she knew who she was the entire time. She was there. She was she was a witness too, but in a different sense. Yeah. That she was wh she, while she was being that tested, was her goal the she, whole time. Yeah, uh, she knew. Com the entire time mm. Mm. Uh, it's I kind of like that Joseph angle, that yeah. you're going along with yeah you're right that um, uh, Patricia's who introduces you but it, you get through Joseph's because point of, of view. her interaction with and him and they it actually call him begins with, at one point yeah exactly he True. begins with him it really ends with him although it does end with Susie with the last right. it's, shot it's more or less bookended with him that's, yeah. that's very but good point he, he's the audience surrogate, surrogate yeah. in a way yes. and mm. really as impotent as he is to affect the plot is as impotent as we are to affect the plot as well. Mm. So um, That is a very good in, angle in, and I think I'm going to come on the side of that. Yeah, like yeah. I was thinking like, of course like lumping him in, but as you just talked it out, I think it, it is fair to call him more or less, the audience surrogate thing I think is the, the crux of this to mm. call him the the actual like in quotes protagonist and give, give him slash Silda's portrayal of a man a pretty strong one because you're right. He's integral to the plot, but also like removed from like the inner workings, at least to the very end. But you're right; you see, you see a lot of it from his knowledge, right? What what he knows, essentially, you know, and maybe a little bit more. But mm, I do like that. Ahead, well, like, even at the one point when the when they're having dinner, they're like saying, "We need a witness," and he is the witness. right. He's like an essential part of the ritual. Right, someone that, needs mean, to be <clears throat> part I mean, of that. It. Actually, mm. is a meta comment because it's mm. also telling you that. He is a witness. And right before you said it, right when we were going into this, I was thinking Susie. And then I'm like, wait, no. And I wrote down right here, Joseph Witness. Mm. And then when nice. you said it, I'm like, yes, okay, that was going to get there. Mm. Spot on. Um, because I, I agree with you. It, it is bookended with his story. It does end on the complete, you know, that he's moved on. That now, this, Yeah, it's a complete arc. Th this garden yeah. is now alive again. And there's no leaves on there. And he's moved on. Even though he Ooh, did. that's a really good point. Mm. Uh, the the portrayal of the dead garden visually, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. that's so solid. That'll go to style, but that's a good call. Yeah. For sure. So I, this is backing up what you yeah. to that Joseph is definitely yeah. the protagonist. Yep. Very nicely done, my friends. I'm gonna give it a one. I think we all are. Okay, so it's supporting with me. That leaves basically everyone, everyone else. <laughs> in the uh, uh, in the uh, ballet, both the dance troupe and the coven. Yeah. I would say, right? Uh, I think that. Patricia uh, Olga, was it? Olga. Yeah. Is that her last name? Yeah, no, no. Uh, who has one of the most heart-wrenching deaths I've ever seen in film. Mm. Um, it's very tragic, for sure, yes. Uh, oh. I know this is going to sound really yeah. weird, and it's uh, going to my part that there's certain things that they, when you see humans are vulnerable thing. Eating is a very vulnerable thing. Mm -hmm. Um 
And, and when I saw her urinating, that broke my heart because that to me was extremely raw, extremely yeah. vulnerable. And I mean, as, as a filmmaker to actually show somebody peeing in their pants that way was very, was very effective. Yeah, it's visceral. Have you, have you ever seen um, Last House on the Left, the original one? No. Uh, it's, I believe, Wes Craven's first film. It is, yeah. And it's but based on have, Ingmar Bergman's The Virgin yeah. Spring. <laughs> but at one it point, in it, they have uh, basically the gang of villains in their force a woman to pee her pants in front of it to order to save another girl hmm. uh, that they're going to kill. And just that level of control over such a basic, like a basic human function yeah, yeah. is so, like it, it really shakes you watching that kind of thing. So yeah, I, can sure. I mean, it, it personally affects that. you because of that. Yeah, I was say. And uh, watching uh, Sarah Sl- like slowly evolve, yeah. learn about uh, what she's in and you knowing what's going to happen to her without knowing. Uh, oh, it's, it's a lot of tragedy involved with this. I want to actually talk a little bit, slightly a bit more about Sarah because to me it was almost a subversion because about a third of the way in the film, mm-hmm. the, the older coven, like the actual witches, say something like, oh, Sarah's a great ambassador, which to me implied she knew what she was doing, like recruiting the, the younger girls, yeah. but she actually didn't. She just yeah. thought she was legit recruiting for the dance troupe mm-hmm. until she actually discovers about, again, maybe three-fourths through the film that was actually happening, yeah. and that sort of drives her to like try to escape, and that what is, leads to her unfortunate demise. Yeah. So yeah, good point on that. I'm definitely giving all secondary characters and, a solid one. And the one. Witch Coven, actually, even though theoretically they can be lumped into the antagonist, like, a number of them... They're all distinct characters, are yeah, they not, right? Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I thought everyone was, even if they were one-dimensional, they still at had, least memorable. In yes, a way. exactly. And well I liked, said. I liked at the end when, uh, when uh, after uh, Suspiria took death from her mother and brought it there, mm-hmm. and that you saw each of the witches... Against kind of against the wall, so you could actually mm. see one. Like all of a sudden, they seem cease to be a group and then it's, it become individuals. Yeah, yeah. Very so nice. Oh, it's a really good call. And the, right before they die, it's like Marcos, bam. Yeah, and that's all, again a lot of that style, but it, it, I think it all sort of bleeds together. But this is a, again, again, this is one of these things where this film could have really been style over substance, and the director. But actually, did a it's both. Fantastic <laughs> job. Yeah, I agree. Chris, keep talking about dialogue. It, dialogue is great. Again, um, it's one of these things where as long as dialogue is very natural, I'm always, it's always going to get a one. But th- and there are some like great lines, like when she's when Patricia runs away and they th- they're trying to say that she joined this, the the Batter Meinhof. He's like, well, you know, and, and who wouldn't want to be assassinated by you know a <laughs> cop for their cause? And, you know, there's things like that, but moreover, like the subtext, uh, and I think we've just been discussing this whole time, the subtext mm. of everything that yes. is said, you know, the, the, the fact, the whole point of the fact that, you know, well, she joined the, you know, she joined, why they, they're, they're like saying that you, it, it, the excuse that she joined this terrorist organization, even though she didn't, the whole thing about the ambassador, as you said, you know, oh, you know, we need a witness in this world. I mean, these are like little things, but. And one of the reasons I want to go back and watch this film is it's like I got so much more out of it this time. Yeah, now that you know, even, like sort of the double meanings of a lot of this. But even thing. Rich saying like, "Oh, this time I point this out," I'm like, "God damn it, I didn't get that." Mm. You know, so it's just like, so I, I think so much of the dialogue is subtext. It's foreshadowing. It's it's you know telling you where you are, where you've been. There, there to me isn't to me. As far right now, looking at this, there isn't a wasted shot. There isn't a wasted Line. piece of dialogue. Yeah. Everything in there just fits into complete uh, a complete picture. Everything is a different texture on it. So I'm definitely giving dialogue a very strong one because I think it is just one of those. It's, it's one of those things. It's one of those threads. Once you start pulling something from the tapestry, it falls apart. I think that the dialogue is as integral to to the to everything that goes on as anything else yeah i mean like i don't have much more to add i totally agree with everything you just said but i also think like it's it's hard to like describe it without having seen like those out there who haven't seen the film that there's sort of just weird like layer on top of it right so like there's double meanings to it like a lot of it but also like i said 
one of the things that impressed me is like they do exposition without it feeling like exposition, yep. right? It's all just naturally laid out for you without like info dump coming here, right? Like, right. And w- when you when you notice that it it's going to backfire, but because it was so nicely sprinkled throughout, on top of everything you just said, I'm going to give it like maybe stronger points than I would normally in mm-hmm. terms of that. But definitely, I'm giving it a strong one because of both of those angles. So, so this is weird because. I liked I liked the use of the German, French, mm. and English in this, but I'm gonna have to give it a zero mm. because this is not a ten movie. That's fair, and yeah. it's this and is the point I'm deducting. The weakest ish part of it, well, yeah, not weak per nothing, se, right? But it's it's good. I don't think it's great. Mm. And I feel that's, you. like I get you. And unfortunately, no. But I'll have to give this caveat here. I'm comparing this to now some of the better movies versus mm. just looking at this as a mediocre movie. Like, if this is going to qualify as a ten, no. But it, here's where you take. Yeah. Well, yeah, I could get it. I think it's legit to take it away on this question relative to the other points or you know, or others or the rest of our scale. All right. Uh, sc- Scott, on to a very tough question for you. What do you think about the style? So speaking of that, I think style is one of, if not like equally strong as some of the other points we we talked about. And I'll just say this, like the way, because of the setup, they're in a, they, you know, they have their own like sort of studio and I'll, there are, there's one, at least two scenes that features mirrors, which we're all no, like, many of, yeah. Half of but, the scenes feature yeah, mirrors. But like two of them were stand out to me. Like, yeah, and uh, many other scenes yeah. also do that. But that means it was very impressive the way they got like the panning shots, like it, an unbroken shot with mirrors in the room, then like going scenes, around the characters. A fully mirrored room. Yeah, yeah. Where they it's, shot, it's, a, it's basically a dance yeah. practice hall. That's where they shot like with four, mirrors. six scenes in. It's yeah, not like they for sure. One. This is their. This is their money shot. They're like, no, this yeah. was one of it's the a, main. Like I said, it's yeah. an integral location, and they keep coming back to it, and it's impressive every time. It always looks great. And on top of that, everything else, the cinematography just in general is fucking solid as hell. Looks great. Um, even like some of the shots of the countryside or even the, the rundown, like sort of the graffitied wall outside the studio. Everything about the composure of the shots in this film was fantastic. So I can't say much more, but I can say that I absolutely loved it and deserves a, a very, very strong one. There's a very bleak style to this. Uh, a lot of kind of mm. winter scenes yes snow. true and you don't actually have the greenery and the vivid colors until the very right, very right. end of the film and it's actually incredibly noticeable when that uh color yeah. change happens it's not jarring but it is a uh, nice juxtaposition we'll yeah. say yeah and as a horror film as a genre like this has one of the most arresting I don't, it's not a death scene even it's like just a mutilation scene. It's it's gruesome for gruesome, sure. But I, I, I thought overall this is a very slow burn horror movie like Hereditary, and this is what I like yeah. as a horror film. There's no jump. Sc- there's one jump scare in this, and like it's like jump scare which in quotes even. Um, it's when the uh, uh, psychiatrist is walking towards the. A building at the end, towards the end of the film, and the uh, one of the witches comes running out and like screaming. Oh, yeah, I remember, I mean, yeah. that's not even like a, that right. much of a jump again. It's, scare. Not, it's not a true jump scare, yeah. we'll say, but it's but, the closest that film comes to having one. Yeah, but it still right creates that sense of tension and unease, mm. and it's perfect for doing that. And I'll leave it at. And besides the mirrors, like. The use of mirrors in this was fantastic, and should have been, I should have talked about it in themes as well. Yeah, I was gonna say but, it, uh, it ties into that for sure, and like identity and right. like stealing. Like, there's this one s- scene yeah. where there's a uh, a female standing, so they had the mirror on uh, Susie and showing her face, in, in, uh, the mir- in the mirror that's over almost perfectly the face of another girl, yeah. like just. Adding style to themes and narrative. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, it's it's very beautifully melded together, and that's all I can say about it. And about the jump scare, uh, there was one jump scare that I didn't consider a jump scare the other night when Joseph goes to the house and he sees the silhouette of what we find is the uh, it's not his wife, but it's the he's being tricked that it, it's right. not really it's like a projection, an illusion, but, essentially. But, but that startled me. 
And that to me is my favorite kind of jump scare mm. where it doesn't jump at you. It's like a slow roll jump scare almost. But yeah, yeah. but the fact that it's there startles you. And it, you, you know, a, a, a good script, a good filmmaker, you don't need something to like jump out of the wall. It just has to be a texture mm. that t- mm. that knocks you off guard and will make you um, uh, shudder or whatever. So, you know, so I was really funny when you said jump scare. I'm like, oh, which one was that? Because. <laughs> Yeah, but no, yeah. You might have thought like I didn't even mention this, but since I left it for you, but yeah, the tension is rock solid and always kept up, and even ramped up when it needs to be, and even actually turned down a bit in order to juxtapose like when it ramps up again, like after that. So, like you said, within the genre, I have to give it a lot of credit on that front because uh, I agree with you. That's a, that's the kind of thing I like in my horror movies versus like just the constant jump scares or monster in your face the whole I, time. I hate, I, yeah. I absolutely despise, mm. I will deduct points off of, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. So yeah. Especially nowadays, there's such cheap things where it's like, and it turns out like the closet, the room falls yeah, out whatever, of that. Yeah. This movie is the yeah. opposite of that and yeah. handled it quite or well. The cat so. jumps out of the uh, <laughs> garbage Like games. Michael Myers yeah. style. Yeah. yeah. Or Halloween style that is. But yeah. Oh, uh, well, so as you mentioned, Tom York. Oh, oh shit, yeah, right. shit. Since Stephen Amosi is not here, the yeah. uh, soundtrack was done by Tom York in this movie, and it's it's very uh, eerie and ethereal and haunting, yeah. for sure. But still with fitting. his uh, distinct, distinct style. Yep. Yeah. Good call, good call. And I was also surprised that he there was some not-so-distinct Tom York stuff in here, sure. too. But yeah, good call. Just another uh, another piece to add on to style, because I think, I think it, for me, style is the strongest part of this film, even though other parts were definitely strong as well. Well, that, I think as we all discussed is that fact that the, the style was part of the storytelling. Right. It wasn't just... It, a, it melded into, yeah. like I said, other topics that we just discussed. So. And we can't even get into the use of color at this point. You know, it yeah. will be here for another half yeah. an hour. It was fantastic. We'll say that. <laughs> Stylistically, this is one of the most impressive films I've seen in a while. Oh, actually, probably since Roma. Mm, okay, yeah. um, all right, fair enough. So, on to me with recommendations. Yes, I enjoy this film quite a bit. If you're, I can see a lot of people not liking this, and from what I saw online, a lot of people don't like this film. <laughs> but yeah. I, I don't think it's for the people who. If you have to have patience to enjoy this film, and but if you do, and you like kind of supernatural horror. This is a great film. Well, it's funny because, like, yeah, I'm going to recommend it, but, like, maybe with, like, an asterisk, like, somewhat of a caveat. If you like horror, you should like this film. If you don't, you're not going to like it anyways. But uh, within its genre, as you said, it's mm-hmm. maybe one of the best ones in recent memory. Yeah. So I am I am a huge horror fan, and I'm absolutely wholeheartedly recommending Suspiria 2018. I, I think a lot of people that don't like it either are... Si- thinking it's style over substance hmm. or the fact that they're they Arkento purists. Yeah. And I know I've pronounced his name like 15 <laughs> different ways tonight. <laughs> um, and you, you know, but um, I, I think a lot of that criticism comes from, you know, being, mm. cause like when I walked into it, I'm like, I didn't know what to expect. I heard great things. I heard bad things. And to me, if you're going to do a remake, you should add something to it. I mean, it shouldn't be, I mean, cause you can go back and watch the original Suspiria. If you want to watch that, you should take that idea and do it justice. Give us something new. Give us a different take. Mm. Don't make us, don't do like a shot, like what they did with Psycho like 20 years ago. <laughs> do a shot for shot remake. Why would, what's the point I of that? I forgot they fucking remade Psycho. I don't get into of, it. But, of yeah. course, they, that the only reason yeah. that I remember this because I, you yeah. know, I just brought, um, and, and I, I, I strongly recommend this film. Again, it's one of these things where I might not recommend it to you. To everyone per se, right? Everybody, that, that's kind of what but, I was saying. If people say, should I see this? I'll be like, yeah, but the people I know that I think will like this, I will issue a strong recommendation. Mm. It really, if we had seen this before our Oscar wrap up, it definitely would have broken the top 10. Fair enough. Mm. Um, I think next to Beale Street and Roma, the, those three are stylistically the strongest films of the, of last year. Mm. Um, and, um, and yeah, to be fair, this is like technically this is like a quote unquote miss film, which, which sometimes do like we yeah. didn't, we didn't get to it when it came out, but we're doing it now. Yeah, and so yeah. I, I I strongly 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 recommend this. Film. Yeah, I just my my final thing is I've never I was never familiar with this. Like I never saw the original Suspiria. I knew like vaguely of it, but taking this one on its own merits, it's a goddamn strong and well crafted film. All right, uh, where does that leave us? It leaves Chris with a ten. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, you and me gave it nines, I yep, think. Yep. Which is a nine point three overall. I yep. think that's pretty fucking solid. Yeah, yeah it's mm-hmm. a very strong, like I said, really well done, well executed horror film. So mm-hmm. if you're into that stuff, check this one out, or give it another watch. Oh yeah, and I, I, I have nothing more to say though. <laughs> but so I'm Jonathan E. Manzer, and Tilda Swinton is the Gary Oldman of our time. <laughs> so I'm it. here with Christopher Morgan. If God has a face, if he she exists. It's Tilda Swinton. Hmm. Because it could be anyone. And yeah. It's got the... And I'm going to run away and join a Dan Shoop in Berlin myself. Good night. See you <laughs> next time. Not Berlin. Never <laughs> Berlin. Nowhere near Berlin. <laughs> Good night. Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows. And on Facebook and Twitter for updates. Mods?